Axis Art 1099. This is my first flying review and my second time having this wing out with the Axis foil. I'm here at Denny and it's a gusty day and it is a really good hand wing. How can I describe this? I've only been out with four different hand or four different foils. I've been out with this, the uh, Infinity 99, the Ocean Surf 2000, and my Millennium 1000, which is a wind, a light wind. Uh, windsurf foiling, wind foiling, race foil. So here's how I can describe this foil compared to the other ones I've tried. The, um, the best for light wind, easiest to get up with the same, these are all, all these are worth my five meter uh, Waspy 2. So it's all the same wind conditions. The, all the tests were done at Denny at this location, different days, but I get a good feel for the wind strength. And I have a, I've been, I've been going here for years. So I have a pretty good idea on like, okay, it's about the same wind. So the Infinity 99 had the, the easiest to light wind flight. Second was the Ocean Surf, really, really close to the minimum wind to get flying. The Axis Art 1099 is actually really, really close to those two. It's like a first, second, third, really, really close as far as how much wind I need to get flying. It's a little bit different technique because this is so much more efficient through the water compared to the Ocean Surf 2000 and the Infinity 99. But um, so you need a little bit more board speed, which this board, the five foot eight starboard wing board, 88 liters, does a really good job shedding the water and getting up to board speed without it being uh, a big issue. So, um, so this is third, but it's super close. And then fourth is the Millennium 1000. That is much lower than this because this is just as efficient uh, through the water as my Millennium 1000, but there's so much more lift and so much easier to get going flying. The other variable I think is interesting is, well, what about when you're flying? I noticed with wing surf foiling, it's a, it's a good effort to get flying compared to wind surf foiling. With wind surf foiling, so it, for me at least, it wasn't as big of a deal to get flying and stay flying because sails are in generally quite efficient. But what about, so when you're wind surf foiling, or I'm sorry, when you're wing foiling and you're, you're flying, it's an important variable for me, especially because I go out in gusty conditions, you can see the lines right there. I usually go in small or medium size, like so gusty conditions. So how is it to stay flying? And this is by far number one. Once I'm flying, it just stays there. There is an abrupt shutdown when you don't have enough wind, so it's a little, and it just shuts down abruptly, but it's very easy to stay above that board speed. A little bit of foot pump foiling or a little bit of hand wing pumping, and you, get stay, you stay up really easily. So once you're flying, and you maintain that minimum board speed, I'm not sure exactly what it is, or minimum foil board speed. It is so little effort just to cruise and to stay on flight. Um, the second place is my, um, my Millennium 1000. That was also really good. The difference between this and the Millennium 1000 is right around on the 12 miles an hour to the minimum cutoff for flight, which is nine miles per hour. This also has a much lower stall speed than my Millennium 1000 is 12 miles an hour under with my Millennium 1000, it didn't seem to have any power hold. I had to be so cautious with it because any little blip could make it foil out and misbehave or lose power. So when I was going that slower board speed, it didn't, um, it didn't really stay flying as well as this. Where this, it seems really responsive. I have a lot of maneuverability. I can go that same 12 to nine to eight miles an hour and I can just cruise around and there's no fear of coming off flight, I have lots of mobility control. I'm not sure if the minimum flight to this is six or seven or whatever it is, but when you get to that minimum stall speed just above it, it still has a lot of usability and a lot of controllability, which is really great. So, and then next up is the Ocean Surf 2000. It's a big front wing for my size of 162 pounds, uh, 74 kilograms, I think, maybe. Um, but, uh, with that front wing, with it being so, so such service area, it's easy to get to flight and it's very maneuverable. It's a lot of fun. Um, but it's, um, because it is larger, there is more drag and I do need more wind to get flying. And of course the Infinity 99 is the, the last in the place and it's, it's last by a lot. It needs a lot of effort and power to get flying. Once you get flying with that, with the I-99, the moment you don't have enough wind, there's so much drag, you just come off flight. So it's, it's kind of, the minimum wind to get flying is important for a front wing or a foil setup, but also it's important to, I'll change angles, um, it's important to stay flying because with gusty conditions or anything else like that, 
So another factor I think is important is maneuverability. One thing I've noticed with wing foiling so far is you get the hoverboard sensation, the, just the complete maneuverable feel that you have that isn't quite like windsurfing and isn't quite like windsurf foiling or wind foiling, to me at least. So this is by far the best for maneuverability as far as the front wings I've tried. It is so maneuverable and I can just flick it and it just flicks over. It's a really cool sensation. Number two is the Ocean Surf 2000. It's a really good mobile front wing also. A lot of fun on that wing. And the Millennium 1000, actually it's more of a, a smooth, it's, you need the speed, but it is actually fairly maneuverable. I can make it go around nicely. And for me, the Infinity 99, it didn't have much maneuverability. It was very hard to maneuver, and any little waves coming around, it kind of hiked it over, and it is a challenge to use. So I think for a heavier rider, it could be amazing, or if you just want to get flying in the slow stall speeds, but I think there's a lot of variables important to wing foiling, and one of them is how easy is it to stay flying. Uh, let's see what else about this. I like the 82 centimeter mast. It's really good. Um, it doesn't seem too short for me. And also, you know, the shorter the mast, the more stiffness. The closer the foil is to the water, it's easier to get the flight. Less drag, of course, but I think also there's something to do with density difference. The closer you are to water, the ratio is different. So the difference between one centimeter depth and four centimeters of depth, you know, the distance of a foil, it's a much bigger t pressure difference than it is from you know, um, 100 centimeters depth and 140 centimeters, de 104 centimeters of depth, depth. So, you know, pressure, density, water, this is theory, it might be wrong, but the closer your foil is to the water, it's easier to get flight. Obviously you don't want too close, otherwise you'll foil out instantly, but just the thought of, I think this 82 centimeter mass is a really good balance. I did, I was able to get the tip out of for a little bit and it didn't seem to misbehave. Right now, so far, I'm just on zigzags and this is fantastic for zigzags. I'm not ready for flying jibes and yeah. Also, I have the short black fuselage at 103, uh, 703 millimeters or 70.3 millimeters. I have the The 400, um, progressive, yeah, there we go. Uh, progressive 400 rear wing, there we go. And I really like these. When I first had it out, the first, today is the first real flight I got on it. And it's like, oh wow, I'm glad I didn't get shorter. But I quickly found the comfort level of it and the this is the short, the ultra short and the 375 progressive rear is the popular go-to. Um, and I did get to push the speed on this tail a little bit. I got just over 18.5 miles per hour on my Doppler GPS watch. So I, that's about as fast as I feel comfortable going for probably a few sessions. And I was able to push it on a, on a flatter stretch with a little bit of a gust. So get a little faster than this. I would definitely like to break 20, but right now I'm just gonna practice on zigzags and feel. And uh, yeah, uh, let me know. I'm sure there's a lot I I know about this already. I've only been on this one real session and two sessions. Uh, let's see, slogging on this. I had the other session was a nice long over two hour session for slogging. And uh, this foil is not heavy. It also isn't a large surface area. So other foils I've had with slogging with my 88 liter board, which for my weight is not that buoyant for slogging sessions, is it didn't have the, this doesn't really have that much of a keel effect to hold it centered, which my Millennium 1000 had a great keel effect because it's a little hard heavier and longer. And also, for example, the I-99, Infinity I-99, it has so much surface area that I actually noticed more float in the board. And that is also a heavy foil. So overall, the easiest of those four foils to slog is Infinity 99 because it's heavy and it's buoyant. But the thing with this foil, the second I get, I don't know, one, two miles an hour board speed, you know, just a tiny bit of board speed, the efficiency of the foil kicks in and adds a ton of stability. And even though there's not much buoyant force, the tail's sinking just a little bit, I feel like I'm floating with this board. I don't feel like I'm tippy or anything. It's just comfortably slogging on at two miles an hour. So it's really easy to slog, assuming it's steady four or five, six miles an hour, somewhere in there, you know, around five knots of wind. Anything less, I'm on my bum and that's fine. Uh, but I'm improving on that. Also I found for slogging and super slow speeds with this foil is I can't make quick adjustments with the board. If I'm like, oh, I'm gonna tip, I go like this with the board, it creates so much drag, there's nowhere near enough wind to keep it going, then, it's, then it stalls the board like a brake. And then if I don't have any board speed, then the, the, the efficiency of the foil and the hold of the foil go down to nothing and that's where it's a little tougher. So if I, my plan to slog this in lower than five miles an hour of wind is to, is to 
just be steady when I'm coming to the lower spines. Make sure my feet stay nice and steady to keep the board speed up. Because it's funny, I've noticed when I'm slogging this time on my bum in super light wind, I kind of go along at a nice speed. But when I'm on my feet and I'm making motions, I don't move at all. It's because I'm digging in the board and making a lot of quick adjustments to stay up. Um, so yeah, I, I, I look forward to have more sessions. This is kind of the first impressions on this foil. I wasn't sure if this is going to be on my largest front wing and after having more success on getting up to flight with a 5 meter and knowing how little resistance there is once it's flying, it's so amazing just to cruise at the 12 miles an hour. I don't really need to go faster and it has so much hold. I'm pretty sure as of right now, I want this to be my largest front wing. I don't want to get bigger. And if I'm going to go out, like right now, it's, there's some good wind right now. Yeah, we got some good wind. It's nice. Um, but if I want to go out in lighter wind, I'm going to get a bigger front wham wing. Um, thinking about the slick 6 to 5, 6.5, and also thinking about the Strike CWC 6, 7, and even 8. Um, yeah, I may sell this hand wing. I think this hand wing is fantastic as a one wing size. I may go for a smaller size, like a 4.5, um, just a little bit smaller and a larger. So for a one wing hand wing, this is fantastic. But for out today when it's a little lighter wind and with this foil, um, when I was slogging, I probably, it was like two to 10. So I would have been slogging with even an eight probably for the, on the other side, on the west side of Lake Washington. But, um, you know, most of the time there's plenty of wind to fly. And I think a four or five would allow me to handle a lot more wind and it would allow me to extend my range. And also I was not overpowered at all today on this. So it's not like I was looking, it's not like this was too big for me for this foil today, but I feel like as I expand my quiver to two, <laughs> from one to two, um, I think a four or five would be a great um, smaller size and then six to eight would be a better large size. But yeah, let me know what you think on this. Um, probably leaving some out and uh, thanks for viewing. Okay, cool, thanks.